Welcome to this playlist of how to use an Apple computer with voiceover. My name is William. Just to give you a bit of brief background information on myself, I am totally blind and have no sight at all, which means I will be solely reliant on the voice output I receive when navigating my Mac to demonstrate to you that it's a viable platform to use for a person with little or no sight. Now, for many years, blind people, including myself, I have to be honest here, at the start, have had to use Windows either for educational or work purposes and still do. And many blind people have been saying to themselves and to friends who've maybe got a Mac, I know I've been asked this question and so has my wife, but why do you want an Apple computer? What benefits does it bring you? There are many, and I'm not here to make you buy a Mac if you haven't got one, or to stop using your Windows computer. I use mine for games, to be honest, I do. And I use mine for leisure purposes um, when I don't want to use my Mac or the battery's dead or something. So I do use both systems, um, both camps, if you like. I have a foot in each, and so I do use both systems on a daily basis. But we're here today to show you that the Mac is a viable alternative and you can be entertained, you can do your shopping, etc. And you can navigate it with relative ease. And I hope that by the end of the series, you're not swayed either way, although if you are, that's fantastic. But if you want to try more and you've sort of got up off the fence and thought, I'd like to give it a go, maybe look around on eBay and get a MacBook or an iMac desktop that's within your price range and maybe start to play around with it and see how you get on. So the Mac comes in two forms. There's the desktop and the laptop variants. Now the desktop one that I'm familiar with is called the iMac. And the way that works, it's like the screen monitor uh, of a variety of sizes. I think mine was a 17 inch when I had one, the screen size. And the computer is housed inside the case. Um, so the power button's on the left and um, back side. And then on the right hand side, you've got things like a card reader, SD card reader, uh, a CD drive, like it's a slot that you push your CD or DVD in. And then you've got a USB ports, Ethernet, etc. on the back. It's got wireless built in and Bluetooth as well. And then the keyboard, the Bluetooth keyboard, takes AA batteries. And so you can sit on your bed or on your sofa. And because the speakers are in the bottom of the screen, like facing down, um, they produce the sounds and so it comes at you no problem so the desktop's a good solution if you're not really a mobile person and you don't need to be out and about with your mac however for me i like a laptop i like being able to sling it over my shoulder you know get in the car with it go somewhere you know get it out put it on my lap open it and crack on with what i need to do all macs come with sd drives so they're not spinning drives they're flash drives and they're very very quick i have to be honest and they come with very good processors as well. Now, I don't have, as a disclaimer, the latest Mac. I don't have the latest MacBook Air. That's what I'm using, called the M1. It's got the M1 chip in it. I don't have all that fancy technology. I have a 2015 MacBook Air, 11-inch screen, very slim, very nice product. Uh, we've got it quite cheap, I believe, off Amazon or eBay, somewhere like that. And it serves my purposes. You don't need the latest and greatest Mac to even enjoy the newest operating system. Yes, it's slower. I'm not going to deny that. It is slower. Uh, my Mac will not be as fast as my wife's Mac. Uh, for example, she's got the MacBook Pro. Yes, I know she's the pro in the family and I'm not. However, it does mean that she's got a very much slicker system to run with Uh more power to the core sort of thing and it does run quicker however that's not to say that the mac i've got should be sniffed at it does let me do my job and will easily let me demonstrate things to you she'll pop on and show you some areas of her mac though that are a bit different and that i don't have later on so the mac itself as i said it comes in two variants the desktop and the laptop now there's two laptops you see you've got macbooks macbook airs and macbook pros now the main difference is that the macbook airs and um, the 13 inch and upwards which i believe that's all you can get nowadays you can't get the 11 inch that i've got now and um, i believe they come with an sd card reader on the right hand side and then you get uh uh, three usb ports i believe it is and a headphone jack which is a mic jack as well they do have inbuilt mics and webcams as do the desktops 
okay and they have a trackpad built into the front okay which feels like glass and when you uh, get further on in this tutorial you'll learn the fascinating way you can even navigate the mac using the trackpad okay i use it all the time and i annoy my wife uh, by leaving her trackpad commander on to just irritate the heck out of her really um, and she gets annoyed with me because I don't turn it off, I forget. But because I like using the trackpad commander to navigate, it feels more like using an Apple iOS device, like an iPod or an iPhone or iPad. So in this series, we're going to talk about the basics of voiceover. We are then going to move on to talking about how to set up a Mac uh, and the quick start tutorial. I'm not going to show all of it, OK, it's too long. Well, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of how it interacts with you. It's the first product that I came across, the Apple ecosystem, if you like, if we can call it that, that actually demonstrates to you how it all fits together. It's amazing. I've not known it on Windows. You get your JAWS startup wizard and NVDA quick start and all that, but nothing walks you through how to even get started using the screen reader, let alone the operating system. And so I think you'll find it very useful. And then we'll go on to things like navigating the dock, exploring menus, browsing the web, uh, looking at the news, uh, maybe looking at a bit of telly on Apple TV+. Plus. I'm a huge fan of that, uh, reading the news, as I say, and uh, then some differences towards the end. We can also do text edit and pages, they're word processors as well. So there's a lot to cover. But the basics of voiceover in this video I'm going to talk about now so that the next videos you'll see will not be my face, which I'm sure looks ugly. It's going to be actually the screen recording of what my Mac can see. So across the top of every Mac keyboard, there are function keys. OK, you've got escape at the far left and F1 to F12. Um, they do different things. I use them not as function keys. I use the features that control brightness and volume on mine. And my wife has got her function keys, but they are a strip, like a glass strip along the top of the Mac because she's got the MacBook Pro. So hers are different. Uh, so she'll show you them later on, I'm sure. We've also... Uh, got the keys at the bottom I want to draw your attention to. You've got the function key on the bottom left of the keyboard, at the very bottom left on the bottom row, and then you've got the control and option key. These are called the VO keys, the voiceover keys. And you hold them down with other keys and or letters to navigate and bring up items of interest like the rotor, which we'll talk about later on as well, to navigate to elements on your screen, etc., and your item chooser and things like that. And you also use the voiceover keys to open the voiceover utility, like the JAWS window or the NVDA control panel or the HAL control panel equivalent in Windows to change a myriad of settings for Braille, speech and announcements. OK, so the voiceover keys, the VO keys, are what I'm going to call them from now on, you have to hold them down. It is a very different concept navigating on a Mac. You need to interact and de-interact with objects, but I'm sure you will see as we discuss why this is important in the next few videos now, that it's very good because you won't get lost on the screen. So in summary, you've got two Macs, the iMac and the MacBook range. Um, shop around, find the Mac that suits you. Don't just go with the latest and greatest. They are expensive. Apple products are expensive. Uh, they're not cheap, OK? Um, they're not like a Windows system that you could probably get for £150. You might get a cheap one off eBay, like I did with this older MacBook Air, uh, but you don't need the latest system to run the latest and greatest software because Apple have gone quite far back in allowing Mac OS 11, Big Sur, which is a new one, to run. Even on my ancient dinosaur Mac, it runs quite well, to be fair. So I hope you enjoy this series of tutorials. It's nice and relaxed, nice and informal, and I'll be interested in your opinions when you have listened to them. I'll give you contact information at the end. Take picture. Stop recording video. Post.